Project Lunar 1.0.5 has been released and with it comes a bunch of really cool features. I'm going to go through them and show you guys how to get this thing up and running. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so as always, I get my builds in advance, so I can't show you specifically where to download it, but I will leave links in the description down below. Even if you already have Project Lunar installed, you're going to need to download this installer, and we're going to install it over top of our existing build. So, I've got it right here, we're going to go ahead and double click on it, and we're going to get a Windows Protected Your PC notification pop-up, that's totally fine, we're going to hit more information, and we are going to run anyways. And now we're going to get the setup dialog here and it's going to ask us if we want to create a desktop shortcut. Now the answer to that is yes. And I do want to mention what's happening here is because this is a new type of installer, what they've done is they've compiled the 32-bit and the 64-bit installers and they've kind of made a multi-bit installer, which will resolve some other issues they were experiencing, but it does make the installation process a lot more streamlined. So what'll end up happening is we will end up with a second Project Lunar desktop app that'll show up on our desktop. And I will show you guys that in a second after it's installed, but all we need to do is delete the old one and move the new one over to where we are going to use it. So we're going to hit next. Now it's going to go ahead and extract those files and it may pop up with a warning depending on which version of Project Lunar you are using that will say, hey, this folder already exists. Do you want to install anyways? The answer to that is yes. Now I've got the option to launch Project Lunar right away. I'm going to uncheck that for a minute and I'm going to hit finish. And the reason why I did that is because I want to show you guys that on my desktop, I actually have a second Project Lunar app that just populated. So this one right here is going to be the one that is the newer version. This is the 1.0.5 version Project Lunar. And the one that was here is our older version. All that we need to do is get rid of this installer. We're just going to drag this right into our garbage can. And this is the one that we are going to use. So now that that's all said and done, let's go ahead and open up the new Project Lunar app. So as you can see, Project Lunar version 1.0.53, you may have a slightly different version. I'm using a pre-release version, so these numbers might change slightly, but you should have a 1.0.5 at your base minimum. Next, we're going to go ahead and open the game manager. Now there are a ton of new features here. One of the big ones is now we have multi-console support, so that's really good. And because of that, we can load up whatever console we want. So if we want Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Atari, Sega CD, 32X, whatever it happens to be, we can actually load them onto our console through Project Lunar. So that's really cool. And I'm gonna show you guys that in just a minute, but there are a few other features I wanted to show you. If we go over to our options section, we actually have a section here called Force Specific Region BG. And what that actually allows you to do is change the background of your user interface to either the US version, the Japan version, or the EU version, depending on which one you prefer. So if you like the art style of the Japanese background on the Sega Genesis mini console, you can actually force it to the Japan background, but it will keep all of your native language settings. So you'll have the Japanese artwork, but you'll have it all in English. So that's a really cool option. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine to the standard uh, default where it is. So that is just a really cool feature I wanted to show you guys that was implemented. Another really cool feature that they've implemented is over in the tools section. If we scroll on down to advanced, there is a new option called fix misplaced save states. So there was a little bit of a glitch where people were finding that if they created a save state, it would just randomly show up in a different game. This will actually fix that problem. So you would select this and it will actually repair the save state and put it where it belongs so it ends up matched with the correct game. Now they've also done some overhauling on the stock save states and they fixed some flaws with the stock M2 code. So that is gonna help with a lot of things and that's gonna be really important when we get into the next release, which is hoping to have some folder integration. So right now, again, we do not have folder integration. That is something that is coming. And because we don't have folder integration, it's still recommended to stay around the 100 game mark on your Genesis Classic until we start getting folder support. Once we get folder support, you can load up 100 or maybe even a few extra on there um, per page or per folder so that way you could end up with an unlimited number of games on your machine. So the big feature here is going to be adding different console games through Project Lunar. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how that's done. It's very, very simple. We're gonna go ahead and start by hitting the add new game button. Then we just need to navigate to a game. And in this case, I'm just gonna grab a Super Nintendo game. Uh, we'll choose the Adventures of Batman and Robin. 
And from here, what we need to do is go out down towards the bottom of the window. And you can see there is an execution option that we're gonna need to select. So because this is not a Mega Drive formatted game, it's requiring us to select which RetroArch core we want. Now I already downloaded all of the RetroArch cores and I installed them and showed you guys how to do that in my Project Lunar tutorial video. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description down below if you guys haven't done that, just so that way you guys can do a walkthrough on how to get those cores loaded up into your console. But what we need to do here is select the core that we want. So in this case, I'm going to select the SNES 9X core. And as you can see, the custom command has changed and now we're going to be running it off of the SNES 9X LibRetro core. So that's really good. We know it's going to run with that core properly. The other thing I want to mention is the game I selected was unzipped. And although I did that, they did add compressed zip file support, but it is going to be dependent on the core itself. So if the core that you're selecting can understand and can extract the game from a zipped file, then you can absolutely load up zipped files, but it is dependent again on the core. So certain cores will allow it and certain cores won't. You'll have to play around to see which one works and which ones don't. Now, one of the really nice features of Project Lunar is they have this incredible game scraper. And because we are now dealing with a different console, we still need to go ahead and scrape our artwork. So we're gonna go ahead and make our choice here. Now we do have two options. We've got the screen scraper and we've got the games DB. Now the games DB previously was not working properly. However, it has been corrected and it does work. You just have to choose which one you prefer. What you may find is that the screen scraper may be overloaded if a lot of users are trying to access it. So you may end up taking a really long time or it's really slow. And if that's the case, you can go ahead and try to use the game's DB. So you might want to bounce back and forth between them depending on how much the servers are being overloaded and things like that. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try the game's DB and see if we can get some results. So I went ahead and selected that. It did automatically pop up some scrape matches. We're just going to take a peek to see what we've got. So as you can see, it's given us the Sega CD version. It's given us Sega Game Gear. What we want is the Super Nintendo. So I'm going to scroll over and there we go. So I found the Super Nintendo version and we do have it here. Now I do want to mention, as you guys can see, the Super Nintendo artwork for the front was automatically rotated horizontally so it fits better on the Genesis UI, which is pretty cool. I do like that. Uh, but we will notice that it is automatically scraping the box art for the Sega Genesis. If you are hoping to use your console in bookshelf mode, you're going to want to keep in mind that it is going to still display it as a Sega Genesis title. But that's okay with me because I never ever use the bookshelf mode. Some people do, just not for me. Uh, in terms of the other information that we get, we do actually get uh, all the metadata. So we've got the release year, we've got the little snapshot of what the game's about, we've got who the developer is, we've got the total number of players, what the uh, genre of the game is, everything that we're gonna need, it's all there for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit add game, and we're gonna hit yes, and we're gonna add that game in there. So as you can see, we've got it right here. The game is gonna be available to us. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add a few extra games on here just so that way you guys can see a bunch of the different artwork styles, but I am gonna fast forward through that process. Okay guys, so I've added a bunch of games on here ranging from Super Nintendo to Game Boy Advance to even PlayStation. So all that's really left for us to do now is to go ahead and sync our console. So we're gonna press the sync button and it's going to start syncing to our USB drive that's connected into our Sega Genesis Mini. So we're gonna hit yes. And I'm just gonna fast forward through this process. All right, so the syncing has now completed. That did take a little while. Uh, it took about two to three minutes and I didn't have a ton on there, but I did add some fairly large files like the uh, two PlayStation games that I loaded up. As you can see, I've got uh, Crash Bandicoot that I loaded up and I also added Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to switch over to our Genesis mini console so I can show you that those games are up and running. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that switch over now. All right, so now that we are on the boot menu for Project Lunar, there is something that we have to do before we can go ahead and launch any of those RetroArch games. What we need to do is we need to access our settings by pressing the B button on our controller. And the first thing that we're gonna do is make sure that we've toggled the higher CPU speeds, the 1.344 gigahertz speeds. You're gonna want that on just because you're gonna get better performance overall out of all of your consoles. Now let's go ahead and scroll on down towards the bottom and there's one more option and it says toggle kiosk mode when launching via M2 engage or ES, which is emulation station. 
it should normally be on and I've toggled it off. And the reason for that is if you're not using the stock Genesis controllers, when it's in kiosk mode, you don't have access to adjust the control bindings or any of those sort of things. So I like to turn it off and uh, I'm probably just gonna keep it off. Once you've got everything perfect and running the way you want it, you can turn it back on and it'll kind of lock up those settings so nobody can adjust them on you. But I like to keep it off so I have constant access to any of the settings that I need. Now that we've already got everything set up, I'm gonna press B. In your case, you would press start and it would probably need to reboot your console to make all of those settings effective. But once you're back to this menu, you're just gonna hop right on into Project Lunar. And here we are. So as you can see, we've got all of our games here. They're currently sorted by release date. And uh, right away, we can see we've got the Super Mario World game right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change this to alphabetical. So I can show you guys that all of the games that we included did show up. So as you can see, we've got Castlevania Dracula X for the Super Nintendo, Crash Bandicoot for the PlayStation, We've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. We've got Pokemon Fire Red for the Game Boy Advance. And I believe there was one more game, Super Mario World, right over here, and then The Adventures of Batman and Robin. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump into both the Super Nintendo games and I'm gonna jump into one of the PlayStation games and we'll start with Crash Bandicoot just to show you guys that it is up and running and working properly. So when you select the game, it's gonna pop up with all the information about the game and all you have to do is hit game start. It's gonna look like it's loading up the M2 Engage emulator, but then it does switch over to RetroArch and you're good to go. Now, in terms of controllers, I'm currently using my PlayStation Classic controller. Uh, I just like it better when I'm gonna be playing any of the other sorts of consoles, but you can use one of the RetroBit controllers. You can use an 8-bit Doe controller. You can use the stock Genesis controllers. You can pretty much use whatever it is you want to use. So when you've got your controller connected, it will automatically default if you need to access the RetroArch menu by pressing and holding the start button for two seconds. So once I do that, you're gonna see that our quick menu does pop up. And of course we can navigate through here. In the event that you needed to remap any of your configuration, you can go ahead and press the back button, go over to settings, and then you have your input controls here. Additionally, if you don't want it to be set to hold the start button for two seconds to access this menu, you can filter through and select whatever it is you like. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it on there just because it doesn't bother me to have that. Um, but other than that, we're gonna go ahead and just jump into some gameplay and I'm gonna show you guys that the game is running properly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and back on out of here. We're gonna to go to our main menu and we're gonna scroll down to quit RetroArch. As you can see, PlayStation games actually ran fairly well. Now it is important to mention that with any PlayStation game or any CD based game, you need to make sure you've got your BIOS files loaded up into the correct folder. The correct folder on your USB drive is inside of the Project Lunar folder. There is a RetroArch folder and then there is a folder called systems. I'm going to be doing a tutorial video showing you guys how to set up Sega CD. So when I do that, I'll be sure to show you guys specifically which folder you're gonna to need to load up all of your BIOS files to. That being said, we're just gonna quickly jump into a uh, Super Nintendo game. And for this, I'm going to choose the Adventures of Batman and Robin, and we're gonna go ahead and get that loaded up as well. And there we go, as we can see, Super Nintendo is actually running really, really well. So let's go ahead and back out of here as well. And that's pretty much it. So this update has been really good in the sense that we can now load other consoles right onto the main UI for Project Lunar. Obviously, we're still waiting for some folder support. And I think once we get folder support, you're gonna be able to get some really awesome custom work here. And you can kind of build this really to your liking. Now, because we are still using just a single page here, it is recommended not to go over 100 icons per page. 
on our Genesis Mini as it stands, but like I said, we know folder support is right around the corner and they've got a bunch of other cool features that are on the way as well. So that's pretty much all I've got for you for this video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.